Greetings, it's the New York Thrifter here, and we are on day three of our Flipping 20 Challenge. Now with this challenge, we are taking $20 and we're seeing how far we can flip that selling women's clothing on eBay. Day one, we uh, gathered up all of our materials and we did some sourcing. On day two, we did uh, prepping our clothes, how to photograph and how to price our items. And now we're gonna get into the beginning of listing. While we're not listing an item today, what I'm doing is I'm going through how to set up shipping and also how to create templates that we're gonna be working with. Now with these templates, we are gonna be setting them up by categories for women's clothing. So we'll have one for women's dresses, ones for women's athletic apparel, one for sweaters, and one for tops and blouses. This way, when we have our templates, it makes listing much, much easier. By spending some time on the onset right now, getting these templates together, it's gonna to save us many hours afterwards and because filling these out are, is gonna make listing faster and easier. And we all know the more listings you can make on eBay, the more money you can make. And so please follow me as we jump into the wonderful world of listing and templates on eBay. Before we even get started, there's a few choices that we need to make and a few things that we need to do. The first one is I suggest you look into the Global Shipping Program. The Global Shipping Program is a program on eBay where it allows sellers to sell to other countries without any of the um, fees or taxes or customs forms. So what happens is if you turn on your global shipping program, that means a buyer in another country will be able to purchase your item. Once it is purchased, you send your item to an eBay uh, processing facility in Kentucky. Once, at the, once it's at this facility, your item will be repackaged and sent on to the other country. You don't have to worry about getting it there, filling out custom forms, filling out duty taxes, or any of those other things. I am a big um, believer in the Global Shipping Program. About five to eight percent of all of the items I sell on eBay tends to be sold um, to foreign countries. And so it's, for me, a lucrative stream of income and so I do opt in to global shipping if you need more information about it you can always google eBay global shipping program find out if it's right for you if you do decide that you want to do this to opt in go to the left hand side where you are signed in and go to account settings once you're in account settings Go down to site preferences and click on that site preference and here you will see offer the global shipping program right now is no so if you click on edit you'll be able to change that and so uh, we want to start now and yes we want to add the global shipping program to your eligible listings Excellent, okay, so that is all set up if you decide to do that. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set up some templates. Now, templates take a little bit of time in the beginning to get set up. However, once you do this, once you spend you know, the you know, 20 minutes per template and you start using these templates, it's gonna save you hours in the long run. So what a template is, is you fill out a form and then, or you fill out a listing and then you save that listing. And whenever you have a similar item that uh, for that listing, so for instance, we're doing it by category. So we're gonna set up a template for women's dresses. So whenever you have to list a woman's dress, you can go to the template, you can uh, enter in a few details and then you can get it listed much faster. Now, if you do it from the very beginning, you never have to worry about it. And so that's what I suggest doing. So I'm gonna go over to the right-hand side to my eBay, and in the drop-down, I'm gonna to go to selling. Okay, now to set up a template, click on seller dashboard right here in the middle, and we are going to start selling. 
Now, if you wanted to list without a template, you could do that right now. You could just click on create a listing and you do exactly that, create a listing. However, if you wanna to go to the right hand side where it says advanced tool and click on that and make the switch, you are gonna get the option right here to create a template. So we are gonna click on that to create a template. Okay, so for this template's name, I am going to, first it is going to be, go to the categories. It's gonna be clothing, because I am gonna be doing women's dresses for this first one. So I'm going to scroll down to women's clothing, dresses. So that's my category. Here, I'm gonna name it women's dresses. Now the title for every single list, everything you list is gonna be different. So I'm gonna leave that blank because that's really gonna depend on the item. We have the category in, so that's good. Mostly my condition is going to be pre-owned. Every once in a while I'm gonna find something new with tags, but I would say a good 90, 95% of the time I'm using pre-owned. So I'm gonna put pre-owned in here. And for the condition description, you're gonna um, be able to write down any flaws in this area. However, if your item doesn't have any flaws, what I like to do is I like to put down gently pre-owned, oops, no holes, rips, or stains. So obviously, if you're selling something that has a rip hole or stain in it, you're not going to put this in. You can change this out. But most of the time, that is going to be my, my general um, condition description. Now, just because you put it in your template doesn't mean that you can't change it later. So you need to remember that if you do have some condition change or something does change, if it is new with tags, once you're in your listing, you just change that. Now for the UPC, I'm gonna put does not apply because we don't know for clothing items what that is. Photos are going to be different for every single item, so I'm gonna leave that blank. Brand will be different, size will be different. So I'm just gonna scroll right through these item specifics because these are gonna be different for every item. Now here is where a template really comes in handy. What you're gonna see is you're gonna see item description. Now you have two ways to type in an item description. You can do it in the standard format where that's just typing and it looks like you know a, a word processing document, or you can switch over to HTML. And in HTML, you actually use computer code to tell, um, your, or to tell the uh, eBay what you want your listing to look like. So, I'm assuming that a lot of you don't necessarily know how to write HTML code and that's completely okay because I actually did this for you. So what I'm gonna do is if you look in the description box on this video, I created an eBay listing description document. So if you look at this, the first thing I say is when you're listing an item description, that you do switch to your HTML editor. And I have a little a diagram here what it's gonna look like along with an arrow that shows you how to click on that HTML, okay? Once you do that, you are going to copy the HTML code that I give you and put that in the description. So if you go to this document and you scroll down, you're gonna see this is the dress HTML code. So I'm gonna go straight from the bottom. I'm going to copy this, okay? I'm gonna go back to my template. I'm in HTML and I'm gonna paste this in. Now this probably looks like gibberish to a lot of you and that's okay. You don't need to know what the back end looks like. Um, this back end is just so the computer is going to read or, or eBay is going to read your listing correctly. Now one of the things that I want to point out that I included in this HTML code is right here at the end. 
where it has this viewport device. Now what this means is when people are using their phones or their, their mobile apps to look at eBay, um, sometimes the different listings aren't going to show up correctly on those screens. So because I added this little piece of code here at the bottom, you never have to worry about that. Your items will always show up properly on any screen. Okay, so once you have pasted in the appropriate HTML, you're going to go back and you're going to look at standard. So this again is going to see, this is going to be what you see. Now, this is great. You recognize all of this. You're going to type in the size, color, design, and everything else. Now, since this is a template, I'm going to leave this blank. So every time we're listing a dress, these are all of the things that we need to list in order for our customers to know what they're getting. So I'm just going to leave it blank just like this, and we're going to be using this template in a little bit and filling it out for our first listing. Now, for selling details, there are two types of selling you can do. You can do an auction or you can do a fixed price. An auction is where you set a price and for a, and a duration and people can bid on that item above whatever price you set. And at the end of the duration, when the auction is over, whoever has the highest bid wins. I find for me personally, a lot of my items I don't use auctions for. And the reason for that is I generally can get more money for an item if I used fixed price, or if I just have a price, I say, this is how much I want for my item. And anybody that wants to buy it can pay that price. Now this way, so say that you have an auction and you set it up for seven days. That means a person who wants your exact piece in the exact size, in the exact color, has to find it within those seven days and bid on it. And, and that can absolutely happen when you have a really popular piece. Like for instance, if you had a solid black pair of Lulu row leggings um, in, a, in a tall curvy. There's a lot of people out there that are looking for that. So an auction might be right. However, with the items that I'm purchasing, you know, a London Times dress in size 10 or a 41 Hawthorne top in a Chevron style, they might not, the person looking for this might not find the auction. And so the auction A might not sell or somebody um, who does an opening bid of, you know, whatever you set it at, which is, you know, whether it be 99 cents or 7.99 or whatever you set that opening bid for might get it for that much money. When if you set it for a buy it now price and you wait for the exact right buyer, they might be willing to buy it for more money. So that was a very long explanation to say, I used fixed price. So that's what I'm going to set up here. So in my template, whenever I'm listing a dress, it is going to be a fixed price. I can always change that later on, but for right now, that's what I want to do. For the duration, I always keep it at 30 days. Now the buy it now price is going to be how much you offer your item for. And the best offer allows uh, sell, or buyers to make an offer. So say that you list something for $24.99 and they might only want to pay $20 for it. They will offer you $20 and you can either accept or you can decline. I like using best offer. I tend to price my items not high, but, but maybe, um, you know, in the middle to high end. And that leaves me wiggle room to allow them to make me an offer and to see if I'm comfortable with it. Now you can set up to automatically accept or decline offers if it is above a certain amount or below a certain amount. I usually don't like to do that. I like to be in a lot of control of my offers. So I let them make the offer and when the offer is made, I manually decide whether I accept or decline. Quantity is gonna be set at one. Payment. I am going to select PayPal and I'm going to be typing in my email address that's gonna be receiving payment, and we did set that up earlier. I'm gonna require immediate payment with Buy It Now, so if somebody buys it now, then they have to pay right there at checkout. I do not set up sales tax, and we will um, talk about taxes later on. If you want more information about this, you can Google how to set up sales tax. What this mean, all this means is whatever state you're selling from, that you sometimes have to pay taxes 
on an item in that state. Um, again, if you would like to Google the sales tax, please feel free to do so. I accept returns at 30 days and give a money back um, through uh, PayPal. The return shipping is gonna be paid by the buyer and I do not charge a restocking fee. So right now we're doing really, really well on our um, setting up our template. Next up is going to be shipping. There are several different ways to ship. Local pickup means that um, the buyer has to come to your house or your area in order to pick up the item. I do not do local pickup. Freight is anything over 150 pounds. You're probably not gonna be doing that either. So these top two are the two that we're really going to be discussing. First up, a flat rate, you charge the same amount to any buyer. So whether or not the buyer lives um, literally in the next town over from you or all the way from across the country, you charge them one rate that you set. Calculated, what this means is you put in how much the item weighs, uh, the size of the item, so the size of the package that you're sending, and depending on where the buyer lives, eBay will calculate the shipping for you. So for example, if you are sending something uh, priority in your own packaging, and it might, to send it to the next state over, only cost $9 to ship. However, if it goes all the way across the country, for me, like if it goes to California from New York, then it might cost $13 to ship. eBay will calculate based on the buyer's zip code, how much it's gonna cost, and they will charge the buyer that amount of money. Okay, so which do you choose? I know a lot of people that choose calculated and that is absolutely great for them that they don't want to spend any money on shipping. They don't want that to come out of their profit. So they calculate everything and the buyer pays for all shipping. With flat, one of the things that you can do with flat, uh, flat rate or flat shipping is you can, if you can lower the price a little bit and it'll eat into your profits. However, it could make that item more desirable for your buyer. So for example, if you are sending a shirt and it weighs um, you know, under a pound, and so the shipping for, uh, for it is gonna be $3 and uh, you know, 26 cents. So if you did calculate it, it would be $3 and 26 cents. However, you know as a buyer, you don't wanna pay more than $3 in, in shipping. So what you can do, is you can click on flat and you can choose a flat rate of $2.99. That way your buyer is going to get a shipping that is going to be under that $3 mark. And for that extra 27 cents, because you will have to pay that $3.26, so that's 27 cents, that will come out of your profit. You will actually pay for that. And so I actually like to do flat. And the reason for that is when I'm on eBay and I'm, and I'm buying something and say I'm buying something, um, you know, a dress and the shipping is like $7 on it, that can definitely cause me to think twice about buying, buying that piece. Usually if an item is free shipping or $1.99 or $2.99, I don't really think twice about clicking on buy because to me, I don't know, that shipping just psychologically sounds better. And I know that's kind of a silly reason, but there it is. So you have to make the decision on how you want to do your shipping. One thing that I would recommend and is to keep it consistent across the board. So if you have, um, you know, your, your eBay um, listings and you have some that are some listings that are free, some that are flat, some that are calculated for the shipping that can um, be difficult if a buyer really likes what you're selling and they want to come back and buy more for you. Um, it's just, it, it creates a little bit of, of confusion there. Um, so I like to do flat rate across the board for probably all of my items. Every once in a while, I'll do a free shipping. Um, usually if I'm selling something like kids clothes or something like that, 
or a, an item that doesn't go for a lot of money, then I, I might do free shipping, but on average I do a flat rate shipping and I usually charge about $2.99 in shipping and in anything over that I end up paying out of pocket, which is just fine for me because I just feel like this is just more appealing. I can set a price that's more appealing to my personal buyers. Okay, so for this dress, what we're gonna do is this, this is a dress template. We're gonna put a flat shipping. For the services, these are all of the different services that you can use to ship something. And this can seem a little overwhelming. So right now, what I really wanna focus on is I really wanna focus on standard services, first class package. First class package is one of the most inexpensive ways to send something through the United States Postal Service and eBay. And it's also one of the shortest. It takes two to three business days. And so this to me is one of the best ways to ship something. Now, first class packages must be under 16 ounces. So it must be under a pound to ship it this way. Anything over a pound, you will not be able to ship first class. However, the dresses that we picked up and most of the dresses we're gonna be picking up will be able to ship first class. So that's why I choose first class. And I'm going to charge $2.99. Now again, it's probably going to go over a little bit. Some of these packages might be sent out for $3.50 or maybe even $4. But in the end, I just feel like this is the right for me and my customers. Okay. If you do want to offer free shipping, all you have to do is click on this box and you will re be responsible for all of the shipping cost. Now, you can offer additional services. So if you click on that and you wanna do an expedited service where maybe you can say, this is how much it's gonna to cost to get this item in one day, that's completely okay. All you need to do is click on that additional service and you can add as many as you like. I choose not to do this. I know mostly with clothes, not all of the time, but mostly with clothes, two to three business days is usually enough fast enough for my buyers. Now, every once in a while, I will get an email. And the email will say, hey, if I buy this right now today, can you ship it today? And usually I have no problem with that. I'll usually go to the post office a few times a week. And, you know, if I've got, if I've got things that are going, I can absolutely add um, whatever they purchase to that, to, for that to going out in the same day. Um, I've never gotten uh, somebody saying, hey, I need this dress overnighted to me. I'm sure it happens. And in that case, if they really want it, generally you're just gonna get a message from, from the buyer. If you do wanna add additional services, that is 100% up to you and please feel free to do so. I do not offer local pickup, but if you wanted to do that, you would be able to click this button. Handling time. Handling time is how long it takes you from the purchase of an item to get that item to the post office and that uh, the item to be scanned at the post office. For me, I usually do that within 48 hours. However, every once in a while, something will come up, you know, with the kid or the job or something will happen. So I actually put my handling time at three business days. And that just gives me a buffer in case Maybe I feel sick or I don't wanna go out or I'm doing something else. It gives me a little bit of time to, so I don't feel rushed or I don't feel stressed out that I have to get the item straight to the post office. Now, in order to get some of the, the perks of being like a top rated seller plus, you know, one business day um, is generally uh, good for that. I just, I, I can't do that. I would get defect or I would get in trouble because I probably wouldn't get it to the post office in time. So really, this is up to you. Your handling time is what you can do. Maybe you live next door to a post office, so one or two business days works fine for you. But for me, I'm going three business days. Okay, now I did choose to ship international using the global shipping program, so that is gonna be checked off. Again, if somebody from another country buys my item, I see it just as another buyer, I will be able to print out that shipping to the facility in Kentucky for eBay and they will take it from there. So I am gonna leave that clicked. Okay. For the package weight and dimensions, I usually don't uh, fill in the dimensions because this is gonna be different for 
um, for the different packages, you know, how thick it is. Um, generally, you're going to have either the same poly mailers or envelopes to send it in. But when you're sending first class, as long as it is under that pound, I'm really not going to worry about that. Custom weight is going to be one pound or less because that is going first class. Okay. So what I'm going to do now that I have this all filled out, I am going to save this template. By saving this template, that means whenever I have a woman's dress to sell, all I need to do is go to this template and most of this stuff is going to be filled out. I just have to enter all the item specifics into all the different fields and it will be a very easy way to list an item. So in the long run, by setting up this template, we are going to be saving so much time. I really, really recommend you do this. So I'm going to click on save. Once you've saved your template, you can either choose to list with the template if you have a dress that you want to list. You can just go to your regular eBay screen or you can create another template. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create another template. And the reason for that is when I picked up the five items that we're starting this Flipping 20 Challenge with, I have four different categories I'm going to be selling in. I purchased two dresses, so we just set up that template. I purchased a shirt and top. I purchased athletic apparel and a sweater. So I'm going to be setting up all four of those templates. And again, I'm going to be walking you through the templates. I know this is a little bit difficult to understand which, with the HTML. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do these templates, walk you through the next couple of templates just to make sure you feel comfortable with templates. So I'm going to click on this, create another template. So we're going to go down to category. This is set at women's clothing dresses. Now for this one, we're going to change this up. We are going to stay in women's clothing. However, this time we're going to go athletic apparel because we did pick up an athleta workout top for women. So I'm going to click on athletic apparel. I'm going to name my template women's athletic apparel, leaving the title blank because that's going to depend on the piece. UPC does not apply. Condition is going to be pre-owned, gently pre-owned, no holes, rips, or stains. Now with this gently pre-owned, I know some people will put used, gently used. Um, I don't like to use the word used. Um, pre-owned just sounds, sounds better, I guess, at least to me, but you can uh, type in however you feel comfortable with your description. Photos will be uploaded depending on whatever piece we're listing. Item specifics will be specific to the item. Now, if you remember our item description, we were in HTML. I'm going to click on that. We clicked on HTML. We copied the code that was given, and then we went back to standard. Again, this code if you go into the description of this eBay video, you will see the document you can download to grab this code. So right now, this is what it looks like. This was the code that we used for a dress. So this might not work perfectly for a piece of athletic apparel. So for instance, if we're doing tops, saying, you know, neckline, length, underarm, that works. However, if we had a pair of yoga pants, this underarm to underarm is not going to work because a pants instead have an inseam. And so what you can do here is you can either change this up to fit whatever you want to do, or you can leave this. And when you're listing, you can actually change this up. So for me, I'm just going to leave this here just like this because half the time this is going to work. Half the time I am going to have an exercise top or an exercise tank top and this will work just fine for it. Half the time I might have a pant and so I will have to change it. Maybe some of these measurements obviously take out um, the neckline, 
um, but I can do that as needed. So I'm just going to leave this as is. Fixed price, you know that's uh, what I like to use for 30 days. I am going to let people make best offers on these pieces. I have my PayPal account all signed up there. I require them to make a payment with buy it now. So if they do buy it now in checkout, they have to make that payment. For the return options, I do let them return after uh, for 30 days, giving them a money back with the buyer paying return shipping. Now, I don't think I went through this last time, but I'll take just a second to talk about returns. Um, in the end, um, eBay essentially will make you return anything. And the reason I say that is if your buyer opens up a not as described case, even if you don't accept returns, eBay will say you must accept the return if it's not as described. So some examples of not as described are if you say a top is small and you have all the information that this is a top small, your buyer gets it and it's actually a large and it does not fit them, the item was not as described and they will be able to return it and you will have to pay the shipping fees there and back because you did not describe the item properly. Another uh, way it can be not as described is, for example, if there is a stain or a rip that is not disclosed in your listing, then um, you, know, you say, oh, this is in uh, it gently pre-owned, no stains, no rips. Your buyer gets it. They find that there is a stain on it and they say, hey, this item is not as described. I want to return this. Even if you have no returns accepted, eBay requires you to, to take back that item and pay for shipping, pay back your buyer for shipping. So because of this, um, you know what I do is I just take all returns. It makes your buyers, um, they can feel uh, better about the purchase because if they don't necessarily like the item. So if it is as described, you describe everything, you explain everything, it, it looks great, they get it in, is exactly as described, but when they put on that dress, they just don't feel good in that dress. They just don't like it. What they can do is they can, within 30 days, they can ask for a return and say, hey, not to my liking, can I please return this? And you uh, say, yes, you can return it. They have to pay for return shipping. So you are not out that money. If they want to return it and it, and it costs them, you know, six or eight dollars to send the item back to you, then that is on them and they pay for that for that shipping. But I do take returns. Again, if you want to reach that higher level in eBay of like, um, you know, the top rated seller plus and all of that, you do need to take 30 day returns. But again, this is up to you. I know people that decide to either not take returns and only take back things if they're not as described. Or sometimes they'll charge a restocking fee. They'll say, um, if you want to return an item, it's going to cost uh, you 20% of whatever you purchase the item for, for me to restock it, for me to get it back, to relist it. That's just kind of my time and energy that it took. And so I don't charge a restocking fee, but you absolutely are within your rights to do that if you choose. Okay, we've got our shipping details. I'm gonna do a same cost to all buyers. I, I know that most athletic wear is going to be under a pound, so I am gonna ship, be shipping this first class charging $2.99 to the buyer for shipping. My handling time is gonna be those three business days to give me a buffer to get that package in the mail, and it's gonna weigh under a pound. So what I'm going to do is I am going to save this template. I now have two templates, one for dress, women's dresses, one for women's athletic wear. I'm going to create another template. This time, if you look at the category, I'm going to stay with women's clothing because that's all I got for right now. And I am going to click on sweaters because I do have a cardigan that I purchased that I want to sell. So now my category is women's sweaters. So that is exactly what I'm going to type in for my template name. Title is going to be left blank because that's specific to the item. 
UPC does not apply. This is going to be a pre-owned item that is gently pre-owned. Photos are specific to the item. Brand and style is specific to the item. Back down to this HTML code. Now for a sweater, this actually does really well. Um, you probably won't have a waist with most sweaters, so I'm actually going to just take that and delete waist right off this list. So now when I list a sweater, these are the things in the description that I'm going to be listing so my buyer knows what the sweater is going to look and be like. This is going to be a fixed price listed for 30 days. I will be taking best offers. I have my PayPal information here. I do accept returns. And I have my shipping information here. It's going to be a flat rate, first class package that I'm going to charge $2.99. And I'm going to save this next template. Once I do that, my sweater template is done. Okay, I have one more template that I want to create. And for this last one, I'm going to go to category. I'm going to change this to women's clothing. And here I'm going to tops and blouses. So right here I've got tops and blouses. I'm going to click on that. So this category is tops and blouses. Template name. Women's tops and blouses. Title's going to be specific to the item. UPC does not apply. Pre-owned, gently pre-owned. Photos are going to be specific to the item. Item specific is going to be specific to the item. I'm going to be looking at my item description. Will this work for tops? Yes. Yes, that will work. So I'm going to leave everything just like it is. Format, I'm going to be selling fixed price for 30 days. I'm going to let them make a best offer. I've got my PayPal information in here. I'm going to be accepting returns. I've got my shipping details. These are going to be shipped at $2.99 in first class packaging. It will take me three days to handle. And it will weigh under a pound because we are going first class. Okay, so I'm going to save that template. Excellent. So what we've done here is we have gone through and we have saved templates for everything we've purchased so far for our Flipping 20 Challenge. Um, I suggest if you have other items that you want to sell, including jeans or pants, um, that you set this up now just because you have, you're kind of on a roll, it doesn't take too long once you start doing this. Um, we did not purchase jeans um, for this challenge. However, what I'd like to show you, if you go on to the document, the item description document that's linked in the description box below, remember, I made this listing item description um, for you to be able to uh, download and understand um, how to list. If you scroll down, we used the dress HTML code. I have a shirt HTML code, which is actually exactly the same as dress, only I, I believe I take out the waist measurement. And then below it, we've got a pants jeans HTML code. So when you get to that item description, all you need to do is click on HTML, copy this, paste that into that HTML section, and you will be all set up for everything you need to list pants and jeans. Just remember when you're listing pants and jeans, it can be more expensive 
to ship because a lot of times they have to be sent priority. What that means is they are over a pound. Anything under a pound can be sent first class and it's rather inexpensive depending on, on what you're doing. Anything over a pound has to be sh shipped in a different way. For jeans, I used a padded flat rate envelope which has a uh, price of, I believe, I wanna say 680. They just changed the pricing structure. It is just under $7. And so when you are filling out that shipping information that you'd need to think um, about changing that from first class to another type of shipping, and maybe instead of charging $2.99, upping that to charging your customer $3.99 to ship. We will be going over creating that template later on when I do buy a pair of jeans for the Flipping 20 Challenge, which I'm assuming I will be doing pretty soon just you know gotta gotta make some of that money back from my dresses and tops before I go go to jeans but um, this concludes um, how to get your shipping and get your templates set up for listing on eBay if you have any questions please feel free to contact me at flipping 20 challenge at gmail.com or leave a comment below I love, love to hear from viewers, so uh, leave me a comment or uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video and if you subscribe. The next video we're going through, the actual listing and creating titles for items.